Okay, here we are inside of SAS Visual Studio Code. Let's first take a look at how you can find and install the SAS extension. Let's head on over to the extension icon inside of the left pane. Let's click on it and then at the top in the search bar, just search for SAS. Here you will see the extension by SAS. Note the blue check mark for SAS Institute Inc. for the SAS official extension. And then here you can then start to install it by just clicking the install button on your machine, of course. Then you can look also through this description. We won't be doing this here because I will guide you through what this extension is capable of. So let's close this up. And let's first take a look at how my code editor looks like. It looks very sassy. And if you want to do the same, just go to File, Preferences, and then go to Theme and Color Theme. Here you can then search for SAS and you will see the free SAS provided themes for your Visual Studio Code editor if you really like the SAS theme. I have here selected a SAS dark theme already because I think it's quite nice. Okay, we are done with theming. So let's take a look at what the extension brings us as well. Of course, you can see the SAS icon in the menu bar on the left hand side. So if we look at it closer, you can see here we were at the extension level before. Now we are at the SAS extension. So let's click it. And for me, it already shows a connection. But let's first set up that connection on our own. You can go there by clicking Control Shift P to open up the command line for Visual Studio Code. Here you can just type and search for SAS, where you find all the different abilities that the extension brings you on this command prompt level. We are going to add a new connection profile. You can also search deeper if you want to, so you will filter it down to whatever you want. Let's click it. First, it's asking us to enter a connection name. That's just for us. It's a handy little tool to kind of separate environments from each other and help you to navigate all the connections that you have. So we are going to call this YouTube. Next, we select our connection type. You can also connect to SAS 9.4, but I will only be covering the connection to SAS via here. So let's select it. Next, we have to specify our SAS server. So just enter the URL, or of course, you can always copy paste into these URL bars here as well. Let's hit enter. Enter your preferred SAS compute context that you would like to use. Keep in mind that this influences what type of autocall macros are available, macro variables that are set by your administrators, or libraries that are assigned by default. So I'm going to be sticking with the default one, which is SAS job execution compute context. For a full list, just go to your environment in SAS Studio and click on the compute context icon at the top right corner. Next, we have to enter a client ID. If you are on a SAS via version that's pre 2022.12, you will have to ask your admin to provide one for you. If you have a release that's newer than that, so starting with 2023.1, you will have a default client that can be used by this extension. So just hit enter here. And now it will um, ask you to sign in to your SaaS environment. We will hit allow on this prompt. And now it's asking us to open an external website, which is good because this is where we will be getting our authorization code from. So let's hit open on this and copy this temporary authentication code. Let's head back, paste that code into this top input bar, hit enter again. And now we are signed into our SAS environment. In the bottom right hand corner, you can see the connection is currently starting with the SAS environment. That takes a second. 
And we can already, if we are inside of the extension, we can see all the folders that are available to us. So what it's stored inside of SAS content, for example, my folder, which is all the stuff that belongs to me. And down below, we see all the libraries that are connected to this SAS session. Here, we see all the defaults one plus work. And also what we now see is in the bottom left-hand side, we see this little YouTube uh, notification for a profile. So if we click on this, we get a dropdown of all configured environments that we have in our Visual Studio code. So that makes switching between SAS environments super easy and breezy. So we now have open our connection with the SAS environment. We can go through the Explorer and we can also take a look through libraries. Let's do this. Let's open up good old trusty SAS help and let's look for the cars data set. Let's double click it and it opens up as a table. Note, this is still in alpha, but currently it looks like this. It actually is quite handy to quickly look through the tables that you have created or that you would like to work with. Okay, now to the real stuff, SAS code. You can of course open up code that is stored within SAS content, like we see here, for example. So we could open up this little individual report object IDs. And if we open up, you see directly the syntax highlighting that is provided by SAS for me so that you can see, okay, this is a let statement. Here is a proc HTTP. And now let's note a cool thing. If we click into a proc HTTP, at the top, we now see, of course, our final name, individual report object ID.sas, and then it tells us the specific proc that we are inside of. This also applies to macros, etc. This is really helpful to kind of orient you where you are within your SAS file. And then you might have already seen it. When I hover over any of the keywords from SAS, I get the syntax pop up to help us guide through programming SAS code. So here we see all the different things for our SAS code. We can yet now, of course, in the top right hand corner, we see the little SAS run icon man. So we can click that to run our SAS code. Or if we hover over it, you already see press F3. So same as always within SAS. Or of course, you can also just select the desired code you want to run, hit F3 and run only the selected code. With F8, you can run all code within a file. Nothing new to those who use SAS shortcuts. Now, this little prompt at the bottom opened up, showcasing, and I have some previous logs still in here, but we can see the code that just ran and it didn't provide any output to the SAS log but this is inside of this output window. Let's clear this log and let's run this whole code by just not selecting anything, running proc HTTP. And now the output for the SAS log pops back up and we can look through our code, right? You can see all the nodes that you are used to from the SAS log. You can see that, for example, down here, there were six, over 600 observations created for this data set. So we already talked about it. You can go to your work, double click the data set, and it opens up the data set. So we can take a look at that. Pretty handy again. But maybe you don't have code that's stored inside of this content, but you develop it locally. Of course, you can just open up files that are stored on your local file system. So let's open up this proc results outputs to table one, which generates an ODS output for us using the proc frac procedure. So let's run it again. I just hit F3 and the lock always pops up. You can of course configure this in the default settings of your Visual Studio code. And on the right hand side, you can see our results opening up. And here you can interact with it like you can within SAS Studio or previously in SAS Enterprise Guide to copy them or whatever you desire to do with this. 
So we have seen syntax highlighting. We have seen the ability to have these little handy notes pop up for SAS documentation. We have seen results being brought back into Visual Studio Code. We have seen the log. We have seen the ability to view and browse through SAS tables. Last thing that we need is a bit of auto-completion help when coding. So let's start doing this and we type and then we get this little prompt saying, hey, what do you want to do? Do you want to use data null? Yep, I do. Let's keep on coding. Let's go through sashelp.cars. And then we type O and we get the observation statement to add this here. So let's do 10. And let's do a run statement. And finally, let's do a proc print here with our data, of course. And we didn't put, we put it as null. So let's go back here, put it in A1. And let's put it here as well. And then I'm like, oh, I don't want it to print the observations. What was this? N no ops. Perfect. Let's take it from the autocomplete and let's run this. You can also see how it removed automatically the tab when I put the run semicolon statement in here and let's run it. And of course, this works, we get our output in our ODS results. And what's also nice is that you can always go back to your previous results because they're still here. Same with the SAS log, you can just pull this up and scroll back through time. See all your SAS log here. Super, super handy and helpful to help you guide through this. And to enhance this, you can of course add all the other extensions that you know and love within your Visual Studio code. So for example, you can see here these little notes that pop up when I hover over my code. This is provided by an extension called Git Lens that deeper dives into the integration with Git for you and helps you to integrate and understand where code is coming from and who added it and why. That's super helpful and this deep integration within the Visual Studio Code ecosystem is what makes this one of my favorite new additions to the SAS via verse. See you next time.